Welcome everybody and I'm really pleased that you could join us. I'm absolutely thrilled to introduce Anne and Chris Frederick as the, um, the, the people who developed fascist, fascial stretch therapy. Um, probably something we haven't heard a lot about in Australia, but the great thing is we are going to get an opportunity to attend one of their courses um, because they're coming here to Sydney, to Parramatta in fact, in August uh, of this year. So Anne's background is in dance kinesiology. Uh, Chris is a physiotherapist. I have known these guys for a very, very long time. We um, we met over a dead body, really. Um, <laughs> uh, the section class. Um, well, said. Well, said. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> um, but we met we met um, many many years ago in the United States and. Um, I think I was really drawn in by their um, professionalism and just how knowledgeable both of them were and their enthusiasm. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm I'm so thrilled that they're bringing fascial stretch therapy to Australia. I'm I'm going to actually let them introduce themselves. Um, and uh, well, first and foremost, uh, we will be giving you the information on. Um, <laughs> Hey, Pussy Cat. Um, we'll be giving you the information on how to find out more about the course, um, and there'll be a QR code. So have you, your phones ready, uh, and you can grab that information. So um, as I said to um, Anne and Chris, obviously, I've been looking into uh, this course for a period of time. And um, from the research that I've done, the things that really um, stand out for me that it's appropriate for all ages. So basically for anyone who owns any fascia, okay? That's all of us. Um, mm. I love the no pain approach. I'm going to get both of them to expand on that quite a bit as we go through. And the fact that it's scientifically based, um, we all have uh, a particular interest in, in fascia. Um, those of you who know me through social media know that I'm absolutely passionate about fascia. So, of course, this was always going to be uh, a very appealing sort of way forward for me. Um, there are a couple of things that I'll leave that to, to discuss with these guys as we go on, because as a lot of you know, I'm certainly not a fan of the no pain, no gain approach. Um, so first and foremost, um, welcome, uh, Anne and Chris. And um, Anne, as the, um, the developer of fascial stretch technique, could you just introduce yourself first? And I'm really curious, what started you on this path? Absolutely. My journey has been a very interesting, long um, adventure. And I always sort of start with the truth, which is I had a premonition when I was a little girl, when I was 11 years old, that I was supposed to develop something that was going to uh, blend art and science and the human body. And it would be something that would revolutionize the way the world looked at it, but I didn't know what it was when I was that young. Um, I've danced since I was four and taught. And so it's my first love. And I realized when I was getting towards the end of that uh, chapter in my life, that it was time to do something else that I had gone back to school and had started to study sports medicine and athletic injury and prevention and all those kinds of things and dissection early on. And I thought, you know what? I, I think this may be a path. And then I got an opportunity to um, get hired as a graduate assistant in strength and conditioning at a Arizona State University. And um, I realized when I had this opportunity of all these different kinds of athletes that I needed to figure out some sort of um, method of taking these giant bodies. I'm not very big. I'm not quite five, two and figuring out how I could keep myself biomechanically efficient and safe. Mm -hmm. So I took the big weight belts and I tied the football players to the bench presses. And I thought, so, hmm. interesting, uh, interesting uh, mental picture. Go on, go ahead. Well, it was something that I realized if I could stabilize the leg, then I could move them through space and not kill myself. Sure. So that actually was logical, except not optimal to keep them on their back with their head hanging off the bench for very long. So uh, I quickly moved to a massage table and straps that stabilized. But it was interesting because 
I was hired to develop stretching programs for all these athletes. And I thought, what a cool laboratory. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I figured out through the research, the joint capsules and the fascia were the most restrictive parts of the body. And I thought, okay, I'm going to develop a technique. Uh, PNF was the most effect effective neuromuscular. So I added that in. Sure. Um, I am a giant believer in creating gains without pain. Very contrary to being a professional ballet dancer, which is exceedingly painful. And I wasn't into promoting that any longer. And I realized that if I could create something that would open up the hips and the shoulders of these athletes and have it transferred in, to their function and their performance, it would make a big difference. And in a very short amount of time, it was giantly successful. And I thought, okay, Lord, this is what I'm supposed to do. Now, let me put the science behind it. Perfect. Perfect. I love that. Um, because, you know, this is just it. There are a lot of people touting you know, the advantages and disadvantage to um, an emphasis on fascia. But I, you know, if you can back that up with, with the, um, with the science, then there's no, there's no way you can really dispute that. So something that I specifically wanted to ask you, Anne, is you talk a lot um, and I'll, I'll tell everybody, if you just Google fascial stretch therapies, there's some fantastic videos online that you can familiarize yourself and, and start to get as enthusiastic as I am about the whole thing. But you talk a lot about decompression. Can you explain that a little bit more? Absolutely. So humans have gravity. They sit, right, the majority of the time. And when people are compressed and the joints are too approximated, yes, uh, it massively diminishes their ability to move, particularly to move with ease. So working with the athletic population, I realized if I could decompress those hips specifically and yes. get the tissue around it to open up, it would transfer to the function. And for me, that was an ongoing um, testing ground so whatever I would do they would go out and do and it was 26 kinds of sports it wasn't just football American football and I thought okay I need to figure out the spiral patterns I need to figure out what movement patterns they need that they're getting um, stuck in and so much of the time there was repetitive overuse in one direction so I would move them the other way and being a dancer we always work in the fascial net not even realizing that it wasn't the muscular way of people looking at things. Absolutely. So I, I realized that when you can create this flow in this movement, it is so much more effective than the linear, traditional, static, aggressive way that it's done. And, and if I didn't know 30 years ago that there was going to be this giant paradigm shift with what it, how it's looked at, and yes. Chris can talk a little bit about it's a multi-billion dollar industry in the United States now with mm -hmm. people trying to cash in on the need of people feeling compressed and stuck and needing, you know, people used to say to me, oh my God, I just, I just wanted somebody to pull my, my legs and my arms and just make me feel like I'm taller and looser. And I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense for an awful lot of people. So yeah. we can do that. Yeah, mm. that's not hard. So another term that comes up quite a bit is um, downregulation. Ah, uh, yeah. We live in a world that is so unbelievably sympathetic driven, upregulated. People just don't know how to turn things off. And they are- I have no idea what you mean, Anne. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Tell, <laughs> tell me more, girl. <laughs> I have to tell you, it is epidemic in the US. I don't know what it's like down there, but it is- Absolutely the same. People are connected to their devices. They don't know how to put them away. They don't know how to unplug. They don't know how to give themselves a break. There's such guilt and shame attached with just sitting and staring at a tree. Mm -hmm. It is sad because we're not meant to be in sympathetic drive nonstop. It is not healthy. And I think people are really paying the price from the immune system compromise and just chronic fatigue. I agree. Honestly. I agree, you know, considering that the sympathetic nervous system was supposed to protect us from predators and, you know, it was very much a survival instinct. You know, these days, um, what what do we feel we need to be surviving all the time? Yeah. That it's just a, a constant drive. 
Mm. Uh, and yeah, I agree. It's driving a lot more longer term effects. Mm. Um, and I think most people realize, you know, I, it's probably exactly the same in Australia, but we wear it as a badge of honor to be busy all the time and to be running and never have enough time for this. And how do yeah. I have out time to do that? And I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to eat properly. And and seriously, we're killing ourselves. Yeah. Mm. Well, and I, I always thought it was interesting because um, one of the things that I've learned, we have a um, one of my um, dearest clients that was one of my uh, NFL players that is now one of my teachers. Mm. And he said, you know, those two hours of session with you a week were the most looked forward to because I could just completely relax and nobody wanted anything from me. And it was this perfect, perfect ability to just let down. And I thought, I don't think I even realized that when I was working all those years, because that was just how we got things to, to change and let go and release is to create that parasympathetic down-regulated environment. But I think also it's got a lot to do in, in terms of creating that environment. And this is something that I've spoken with Chris about in the past is that what we do as, as um, therapists, and hopefully this will continue into the future, is that just by spending time in people's space and really kind of directing conversation and people actually get just to unload and leave a lot of their rubbish behind them and they mm -hmm. walk out going oh my god I feel so much better and it's not necessarily even what I've done as a therapist it's just being they're in a safe space and they can just decompress absolutely and, you know super important um the other thing that I just loved watching the the videos was the amount of traction that you use and it's all so gentle and it's all so regulated and soft and and progressive I, I really liked seeing that done well I have learned if you slowly and gently peel open bodies in mm -hmm. a non-scalpel uh, way yeah since you and I have we have that background that knife down. Yeah. <laughs> no knives in my room um that when you gently allow it to unfold it's this beautiful dance of progressive uh releasing and letting go and it, one of the things that's also interesting is we don't always just open things sometimes you need to compress certain areas that are too open mm -hmm. so the thing with fascial stretch is we are working on balancing the fascial nets yes so it's not just across the board open everything sometimes you need to close an si joint to open other pieces. So there's there's even more to it than I think the videos uh, reveal. For sure. And I think this brings in the, the individuality of the programs that you're creating because let's face it, you know, Robert Schleip talks about the temple dancers and the Vikings. So not your NFL players aren't going to be the same as your dancers. So, you know, it's it's what that particular body needs at any particular time. And that's where, you know, a skilled therapist whether you're a physio, whether you're, you know, Pilates based, whether you're yoga based, you know, whether it's movement or hands on manual sort of therapy, you know, you can read your clients. It's, that's what we do. And so, you know, it becomes very interesting in terms of individualizing a program. So, you know, every patient, it's like a new adventure, isn't it? Indeed. And that's the fun. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But just seeing somebody just melt on your table, it's kind of nice, isn't it? Well, it, it's very uh, fulfilling for everybody involved. Exactly, exactly. Now, we, you also talk about how long-lasting the effects of FST are. What do you put that down to now that you know so much more about fascia? Or do you think that it's more psychologically based? I think a giant piece of it is because it's customized to what they need and not cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. So it's truly listening to them at that moment in time. And I think when you address it that personally, there's a different level of longevity in the effect sure. of it. And also buy-in for the, for the client. Well, we live in a world where people look for customization. Yes. And they will pay for customization, right? 
They will pay for somebody that has an expertise in something. Mm -hmm. And because of the way we do our training, it's a, a six to one ratio of students to teachers. So it's very intimate hands-on. Beautiful. And the students feel the teacher's hands, the teachers feel the students' hands, and the whole week is like that. Mm -hmm. And that's why the quality of the students coming out are so high because they're so skill checked over and over and over that they really, really understand the feel of the work, not mm -hmm. just the, the technique of the work. Mm -hmm. No, beautiful. So um, we talked about it a little bit in the past. This is, this is a, a fairly new idea for a lot of Australian um, therapists of different kinds. So you talk about um, how individualized the approach is with FST and that there are a lot of other franchises um, like stretch franchises in America. You know, mm -hmm. what, are you, what are you kind of up against? And I mean, what's the big difference between FST and the, the, the franchises? Well, it's interesting because 30 years ago when I started this, um, I had no idea that it was going to evolve the way it has. Mm -hmm. um, the truth of the matter is, and this is the sad part, um, when venture capitalists see an opportunity to make money, when they see there's a demand in the market for something, mm -hmm. they invest in it. And what has occurred is these um, franchises, and they're all relatively similar in their approach, they allow the person on the table to dictate how intense the stretch is, which scares me to no end. Mm -hmm. um, the people sometimes don't even have live training before they go into to work. Um, they're working in open settings. They are doing the exact same routine, no matter who's laying on the table. Yeah. No assessment. There's no real um, personalization. There's no um, diagnostic piece to it. It's just, here's your eight stretches or whatever it might be, no matter what you're presenting with. Mm -hmm. The frightening thing about that is when people go to these places, they usually are looking for something or in pain or have some sort of condition, something yes. that's going on. So the bad news is, is um, a lot of people are being hurt. The lawsuits are starting to come up and that's the bad news. The good news is it, it, they have spent millions of dollars advertising and our students have actually um, been able to benefit from the exposure and the the knowing that this is something that's possible so it's always interesting when people say you know they get all up in arms our students get up in arms about it. i'm like guys don't worry about it there it's like a our our correlation is like a chinese restaurant that there's you know four things on the menu and it's ch relatively cheap and it's not very good quality or you can get a custom meal with a tablecloth and somebody who's actually gone to um, culinary school. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's interesting because honestly, the franchises um, have helped our students do really well and it's created a better um, exposure to the public for the need of it. Sure. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. You know, we've had we've had um, venture capital people, billionaires, try to get us to franchise, and it's just not. Yeah, not what something we're interested in doing. Yeah. I I like entrepreneurial people, and I like people that are going to create their own vision and and not kind of go down that lane. So anyone who is is skilled in what they do, again, whether they're physio, Pilates, kinesiology, um, you know, you you name it. Um, is going to enjoy this work because we've got that feel for the tissue and you know because one of the one of the things I've found really frustrating is that a lot of you know gyms for example is you know one ex one sort of issue of they cater to the well population where we're not catering to the well population people come because they've got a problem and yeah. you've got to be able to a recognize that problem and b work with that issue to resolve that to their satisfaction as well as your own that you can let them walk out and think that feels completely different because everyone who's watching this I appreciate knows that sense of tissue letting go of resistance departing our body 
And, you know, there's nothing more satisfying. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to find when I start working with FST that I get as much fun out of that as I do with other modalities that I use, which I often say to my patients, I don't know who enjoyed that more, you or me. So it's that, that, that sense of engagement and that feeling and not that, as you call it, that cookie cutter approach where one size fits all because everybody is different, you know. Absolutely. So Chris, let's, let's turn to you. Um, now you're a physiotherapist um, and I'm just curious, how did you integrate this into your practice? Well, as you probably experienced in physio school, we were taught, I would call it traditional stretching. Mm -hmm. I would say compared to maybe uh, in other domains, we try to vary parameters a bit, yes. you know, with, with intensity, duration, and frequency. We tried to sort of do the best we can with the knowledge we were given, but honestly, traditional stretching we see now in the franchises are pretty much stretched to the point of pain. Mm -hmm. It's it's done in a very linear fashion in one direction. It's based on range of motion. Um, and it's basically always trying to lengthen someone, mm -hmm. something, uh, some range of motion. Um, and um, it's held oftentimes 15 to 30 seconds mm -hmm. and maybe repeated twice for each muscle. <laughs> And so the, the feeling that the client or patient um, feels some amount of discomfort to pain is often encountered. I remember stretching uh, children when I had a pediatric fellowship, even before I got accepted into physio school, I had this fellowship right. and I was supposed to stretch these young children with cerebral palsy. And once they knew what I was going to do, they cried and screamed the next day when they saw me because they knew Here's PT, pain and torture, not physiotherapy <laughs> coming. And it's oh, like- We've been called lots of things, haven't we? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I was like, oh, this is not good. And, you know, we were taught, well, it's necessary. We're trying to lengthen tissue that's held down with fibrosis, scar tissue, what have you. And so when I learned of the fascia stretch therapy, when I first lied down on Ann's table, I, I was like, this is not stretching. I literally said, this is not stretching mm -hmm. because I was comparing it to that, what we, yes. what I just yep. explained. Yep. So I immediately started once I experienced it and in one session rebalanced my body. I had a anatomical leg line discrepancy. I thought because I was involved in a car accident, I had multiple fractures and I had a limp my whole life. Well, she evened it out <laughs> and I thought, okay, I need mm -hmm. to learn this. Sure. Sure. So is that I how did. you guys met? Yes. <laughs> an, orth an orthopedic surgeon introduced us not knowing what he was about to set into motion. Well, there you go. <laughs> that's that's complete... one of the, the more kind of yeah. um, movie worthy introductions. <laughs> yeah. Yes, a movie to come. But I did integrate it right away, obviously, because it works yes. so well so quickly. And I also realized some people, uh, let's just pick the Viking, as Robert Schleit would call it. The person built for stability who doesn't have yes. much mobility, a classic example, the strong man, strong woman contest where they lift big boulders and trucks mm -hmm. and things like mm -hmm. that. So they don't really, they think have much use for <laughs> flexibility or mobility. And- um, Well, everyone needs to move the last time I checked. Well, yes, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get into that. But um, yeah. just stretch on the spectrum, people don't realize there's a whole spectrum of flexibility. Mm -hmm. Of course. And so, We'll put the spectrum at the far end of hypo mobility, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so the offense in American football, it's the offense of linemen and others like uh, the strong men and uh, competitors and others. They need pretty much decompression mm -hmm. because yes. of all the weight that is compressing their body over the years of training, much, yes. less, gra much less gravity alone. And they feel amazing because their useful functional mobility is increased. They were actually losing it mm -hmm. based on, you know, more is better. And they weren't mm -hmm. doing the, the necessary decompression and the targeted stretching in multi-directional ways, mm -hmm. not just the sagittal plane, mm -hmm. which is often done, you know, with yes. the hips, movements, right? Yep. Uh, even the hamstrings and even not, you know, you learn you don't have to stretch the hamstrings when your hamstrings are tight. You know, when you have 30 muscles crossing the hip, why are you just focusing on the longest, tightest one with the sciatic nerve 
buried in there, (laughs) which could piss off very easily. So I I learned right away, when you have a fascial multi-planar approach to the body, where you individualize and again don't cookie cutter it or it you customize it and you don't do just you know one size fits all stretching it makes a huge difference on outcomes and but i can imagine too i'm sorry to interrupt but Uh just hearing you say that i can appreciate that when you start a particular technique and you start to feel shift you're in a beautiful position to then kind of modify and go into potentially a different part of the range so this is what a lot of that static stretching this is how you stretch your hamstring it misses all of that because we've got three heads of muscle there and right. you know one is potentially tighter than another which is going to create some kind of torsional stress around the hip and or the knee so you need to have that adaptability within that stretch to feel where does this really need the help Right. And so I was able to do full on stretch sessions without much else having to be done physiotherapy wise for some people, for some categories of you know restriction. They mm. mostly needed that approach first just to open up the fascia, release the fascia. They were so bound up. Yes. And that for, that for me was the, the go to is it's a wonderful way to screen the body and clean up a lot of compensations just due to the restrictions and tightness. It would literally clean it up. And then as a physio, you can focus in, it's basically marinating the meat <laughs> before you, you get in and, and dine on, dine on that's it. A, that's an interesting, considering where we met, that's a really interesting um, <laughs> yes. analogy, you know. But, you know, the, the thing that I'm getting really excited about is that, you know, certainly from an Australian physiotherapy um, perspective, and less so now that I, I work so much with the fascia, but the, the tendency is to get in there and start mobilizing a joint. But if you've got, you know, considering that a joint is a completely inert thing without the myofascial tissue around it, if you don't address that first, rather than as an afterthought, you're giving yourself so much more work to do in the joint for for literally no gain until you release the myofascial structures around that, then you'll have a completely different feel Mm -hmm. to what's going on in that particular joint. That's so true. I mean, a a classic example is if you constantly get joint manipulation, like Mm -hmm. some professor uh, professions are focused on the joint. So we don't have to mention which professions (laughs) we know what they are. A couple that come Uh, to mind. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, Originally they were developed along those lines and those practitioners eventually realized you need to learn about the fascial pull, the vectors of pull from my fascia, which is why the joints keep being malaligned and pull out of Mm -hmm. out of alignment and so yes it's a wonderful approach to you just balance out the myofascia oftentimes the joint manipulation is not even necessary Mm -hmm. and if it is it will now hold as opposed to oh it's out again it's out again it's out again meaning Mm -hmm. malaligned again and again which is why some of those businesses and joint manipulation were thriving because they never addressed the soft tissue it was always manipulation and when it and it when it gets malaligned again, it's obviously not in the joint. It's not the cause. That's the symptom. Mm-hmm. You need 100%. to go. What, what is pulling the joint out? And yeah. obviously, it's not just a muscle, because mm-hmm. in the fascial world, there's multiple vectors, and it's not just muscles that attach. You know, we're learning in fascia anatomy. It's not attaching an origin to an insertion. Yeah. Muscles attach to muscles, which are just important to look at the septums. Mm lead to the imbalances not just you know one joint one stretch one direction one focus we have to really look at what's above and below and actually neighboring what's next yes. to yep 100 i mean that was a real game changer for me when we started talking about you know 85 percent of glute max has no bony attachment at all mm-hmm. and you start thinking hang on a sec what about all that stuff i learned back at in anatomy school so you know literally it's it's so enlightening to to start thinking about the body in that way that things don't happen necessarily just in series there's there's all sorts of ramifications occurring because we've got dysfunction at a certain level and the knock-on effects are just tremendous so you know to to um ignore any of those contributing factors is just folly because you're just not going to make the gains 
that you feel you need to make. I really see this as another huge step forward is, is thinking about the body along these lines. I'm so excited about doing this course. Well, I actually have a video if you want to see it now or later. Right. Uh, and at the end, stretching the glute region, her formus. Um, are you interested? <laughs> well, oh, can I get back to you about that? No, of course. Can't <laughs> wait. Right. All right. So then I'll share. Let's say, let's say, where is this a desktop? Hmm. Is that what we're doing? I'm looking for my. Let's see if we have that here. Let's see if this works. That's the desktop. I'm sorry, I'm going to be looking up here because I really want to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me see. I'll do it one more time. And I'm looking for my keynote. Let's see. Where's yeah. my keynote? Can you download documents. Okay, let's look at documents. Can I find it? <clears throat> nope. <clears throat> well. Good thing we can edit this all out. Mm -hmm. That's true. One more try. That is a very good thing. No one else is watching. <laughs> Notice here. Aha, there it is. Yeah, but she doesn't see it yet because it's not sharing. You got to share it. There you go. No, it doesn't. There's nowhere to share it because it doesn't show it. I'll do this again. Ah, let's see if that's. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. You see it now. Well, since we're here. <laughs> There's the QR code, listeners, viewers. Mm -hmm. We're coming to Sydney August 12th to 16th. And do you mind if I just show a few slides here leading up to the stretch? Please okay. do. Please do. do. But while you've got the opportunity, um, take the QR code. That'll give you all of the information that you need. Um, I'm booked all ready to go. I've got my hotel all sorted. So, yeah, don't, um, don't, don't hesitate. I think this is going to be really exciting. Ooh, we can't wait. Uh, let's see here. Let me click on this. There we go. So as we were saying, assisted stretching in the U.S. Is alone is a $50 billion industry <laughs> per year wow. annually. This is just one company there. Stretch Lab is expanding. They have over 300 locations now, and it's still expanding. It, it means the public, find, they find value in this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the good news. The not so good news is without bad mouthing any stretch franchise, because actually they're helping us with their million dollars of advertisements. <laughs> People find are finding us and our students. Mm -hmm. um, they're also getting hurt at these places because you know the, the training is minimal compared to what we do. Mm -hmm. And they don't do assessments, which need to be done if you have someone coming in with histories of, you know. Uh, being discharged from physical therapy and they're still not fully functional. Mm -hmm. So yes. there's things going on and people coming with low back pain and where is this coming from? You know, if they have any hypermobility, they're going to get stretched and mm -hmm. oftentimes it's inappropriate mm -hmm. and you need to be assessed. So anyway, in a nutshell, um, this is an expanding industry going all over the world. I don't know about Australia yet, it's but there. If, if, okay, it's there. Yep. Anne said it's there. Yeah, it's there. Okay. Um, and people are, are, are liking it, but people are also getting hurt. So we need people to be trained right. Educated. And that's, that's what we're all about. Hands-on education. Here's a, a nice comparison of FST and traditional stretching. We do global and local assessments. And this is number one. And across the way on the red, they do local limited passive range of motion, which is what I was taught originally. It needs to be more global as well as local. Number two, yes. we do multi-planar non-linear because it's not just but about straight lines why because the anatomy is spirals and diagonals it's not all just straight lines like a machine right mm. and traditional stretching number two is more single lane kind of one dimensional and very linear number three as we said it's pain free for fst and for traditional it's usually to the point of discomfort or pain and that you know uh Allison, that will stimulate the amygdala, the threat section of the brain. Yeah. It's really not good. People who are hypermobile already have an enlarged amygdala mm -hmm. because they don't know where their body is from the hypermobile. Exactly. Exactly. Number four, we have duration of stretch as breath guided. It's based on whether we want to downregulate or even upregulate an athlete getting ready for a sport. Mm -hmm. Number four, duration is, is one size fits all. Hold it for 15 to 30 seconds. Uh, number five, we do repetitions as indicated. Oftentimes, the left side of the body is very different than the right side. Mm -hmm. So why would you do the same amount of repetitions? 
Number five for traditional, two repetitions. That's it, move on. <laughs> number six, we move. Time is money, second. Chris. What's that? Time is money. <laughs> Time is money. Number six, sinusoidal hydraulic motion. That means we move what we call the stretch waves. If you imagine the beautiful waves around Australia, the, the lapping of the waves, the ebb and flow, right? That's how we stretch because the EKG is the heart wave, the waves coming into the eye's vision. This is all based on actual biology and physics. It's all wave life for the most part. So we move that way. And hydraulic means we, we are taking into account, we are 70 to 75% fluid based organisms. So you have to take into account a little time it takes for the fluid to leave an area that is uh, dehydrated, for instance, and you need to start hydrating that tissue. There's a different method or way of moving that tissue. And oftentimes people come in very dehydrated. So this yes. is all taken into account. Number six for traditional mechanical hinging movement, we move this way and that's it. And then we move to the next muscle and the next muscle, pretty much linear, like we are made like machines. Mm. Number seven, we always pair with compression. It's not all about lengthening. You could destabilize people by just lengthening all the time. Number seven, no compression. They don't do any yep. compression. Yep. Uh, number eight, we personalize, as we said, they protocolize. And number nine, research-based, especially we have our own research, FSC research, that is IRB reviewed, and we're doing another study this year. Right. They really don't base it on, they base it on poor research, which is outdated and actually pretty poor quality in terms of stretching. Mm -hmm. um, our goal Anne, let me see if I can, is to see how... If I quiet the vo her voice, can you hear <laughs> us still? Yes. Oh, you, you are low. We'll keep her a little bit low there. No, because then you need her oh, and okay. us. Okay. Do you want to describe what you're doing? Um, sure. I, my, my whole goal is to have the, the therapist or the practitioner as relaxed in their body as they possibly can be and use their body in a way that's efficient. Um, I'm always being uh, cognizant of not straining low backs and things like that. So I use my hips and shoulders a lot. And I don't actually use my hands a lot, believe it or not. Um, I am a big believer in being able to be hands-free so that my body can feel the tissue and, and then I'm not being, um, I guess, tempted to use my hands. So that's why I have my, the students actually put their hands behind their back like they're skating to start to learn this and using the weight of their body to move it and allowing the tissue to um, indicate where you add a little bit more um, energy into it and where you need to ease off. So I'm always using the, the ground and lifting up through it and allowing my body to just kind of melt and, and hug over the top to create this, the uh, movement, which is a very different way to look at this, which is also how I can move giant human beings with ease and it is um, a rather deceptive because I don't strain trying to move what most of the time people think would be an impossible task. And also yes. if you look and really did a fan like motion to get all of the fibers of the glute, mm -hmm. right? She didn't just stay in mm -hmm. one linear angle. She was yes. slow decompressing at the same time as she went through the slow wave, stretch wave, really accessing every part of the fibers that need attention, being much more complete than just unidirectional. But I love how, you know, you, you um, that, that's the just patient a, to dictate you need to the turn speed, the, the, it, it's just lovely to watch because you can sort of see how, you know, well, Chris, you know, you're the patient in that one, but yeah. you know, at no time do you look like you're tensing and you're just going with it because Anne is, is cognizant of, of what your tissue does and does not like and which direction it wants to go in right he's usually sleeping <laughs> <laughs> and honestly you know how many people the foundation of health one of the foundations of health is sleep we know that it's sleep medicine now mm -hmm. and there's lots of research about people not getting quality yeah. sleep. you can get eight hours but it's not quality yeah. if you don't go into deep rent if you don't go into deep sleep poor sleep and REM sleep or non-REM sleep if you don't have yes. that balance out so we have found people coming back saying, I've never slept better mm. from basically doing what we do with FST. Mm -hmm. 
So this... Now, I just want to want to draw something out a little bit more. You talked about how many people are dehydrated. Do you advise your clientele to hydrate pretty well before they come in? Because the exciting thing is with this type of stretching, you are actually really going for stimulation of the lymphatics. Absolutely. I would say the single thing that we stress the most is the hydration piece is the single largest factor to add to people's mobility or uh, take it away. And as a matter of fact, when we had the clinic, we used to have a, um, the athletes would get IVs while we stretched them. Wow. They were so dehydrated. And at about seven minutes to the dot of that IV, their tissue changed. Wow. Wow. And we, we would do it one after the other after the other when it was a flexible needle. So I, I worked with them while they were being um, IV'd. That's amazing. And it's just time, time's money, trying to put as many things together. But they come in dehydrated from the hot Arizona sun and in their sure. uniforms and everything. And it was remarkable almost to the dot, seven minutes, their tissue would change and there would go, oh, because it's a that giant. That is remarkable. Yeah, we're also yeah. talking about hydration is such an essential part of sleep quality now too. Crucial. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that all goes with the run, 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 never stop and never, and if they drink things, they're caffeinated or something that's actually dehydrating, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a, that's a, I would say sleep and hydration are the two giant pillars. components. Real pillars. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This is fascinating. Great. So I did originally when I was working on my degree in 1997, I did uh, research on the uh, FST modality in the biomechanics lab. And when I defended it, the thing that's remarkable about this is the um, findings were between 36 and I think 54, 58. Can you see what it is on there? Percent. I can't see it. Anyway, it was almost identical statistically 20 years later when we did this with the medical school. Okay. So my, our goal is to, we're going to go in, we didn't do a control group with this. And that was, we we're about to, and then COVID hit because we need a control group in order to have validity for publishing in the medical journals. So we're now ready to go in. We've got um, IRB approval. We're ready to go in with the control group and an experimental group to do this study again. Uh -huh. And our goal, is, we're going to be doing it this fall. Our goal is to be able to have um, similar outcomes if that is, uh, possible. And then if we can duplicate it or uh, actually triplicate it, if there's such a word, with the same kind of findings, it shows the um, consistency, which is a very rare thing with research. So take Sorry. that opportunity again, now that you the it's up on the screen. Um, if you didn't get an opportunity to um, get the QR code before, now's the perfect time to do that. As I said, that will have all of the details of the course. Mm -hmm. And of course, on the right hand, that's actually the cover of our book. And it's actually the second edition. So the first edition was pretty popular. And we were invited to uh, write. And we're honored that we were invited to write a second edition. And really, it's, it's full of pictures. <laughs> so that's the good news. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful book, actually. It's, it's color. Um, and it has instructions on how to do many, many assisted stretching that could benefit physiotherapists in their practice, as well as mm -hmm. uh, any body worker, of course. It's usually the missing link in body work, like massage, for instance. We have many massage therapists taking our course mm -hmm. saying, you saved my hands, my thumbs are mm -hmm. getting beat up, mm -hmm. my back always bent over. You know, the structural integration, which I do, uh, that deeper fascial work using the elbows and the fists and other parts of your hand, you get beat up over the years. Um, and stretching is just a nice way to complement mm -hmm. and even in some cases substitute because you don't always actually have to go in there and do that to the tissue. The, stre the stretching can release things. Mm -hmm. And then you That's can exactly get what I said before. You know, once you address that myofascial and you just give that tissue, you know, permission to move how much less are you going to have to do with the joints 
Absolutely. And I think that I'm the super that excited I'm, because I, my hands are starting to get really, really tight. <laughs> oh, we are so excited to have you join us. That just makes me just thrilled. I think you're going to love this. And, you know, the book is I wonderful, I am. but but it's a live art. So you can look at the book and you can get a good idea. In fact, it's required reading for the class to have a good understanding before you come in. But um, hands on therapists need live class, right? 100%. 100%. You know, it's a little bit like looking at anatomy, an anatomy book and doing a dissection. Right. I say to people all the time, I've got the most magnificent muscle poster up on my, my wall and I say, for goodness sake, don't think that's what it looks like when you open a body up. Absolutely. <laughs> I said, that, that's a cleaned up artist's impression of. And I said, no two people are the same anyway. So, yeah. you know, enjoy. But no, I'll, I'll, um, I'll get the book and I'll, I'll have that all down pat by the time uh, I'm and doing then, it. And then the other thing that comes with class, my dear, is a <laughs> giant vi uh, video library to see Yay. all the technique ahead of time that you get to see exactly what's going to happen in class. Awesome. There's a awesome. giant support system for learning and all the preparatory stuff. So when you walk into the classroom, it is 99% hands-on learning. Sure, sure. When no, you, no PowerPoints in our class. And when you graduate, you have what we call the FSC family mm -hmm. of practitioners from beginners to advanced that are ready and willing and they really want to help. Yeah. They want to help the beginners uh, integrate it in their current practice. Great people. We have an FSC family. <laughs> Some of the practitioners have been with us for 20 years. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Wow. Tons mm -hmm. of experience. They're all over the world. Mm -hmm. We have sports specialists. Mm -hmm. We have people just working on the elderly. Mm -hmm. We have people working with specific medical conditions. Mm -hmm. It's it's rich with background and just a wonderful peer group. And they vary from new new grads. Some of them are, are as young as 18 to 20, believe it or not. Wow. And wow. they're already starting their own business. Mm -hmm. You just have to have a basic knowledge of anatomy. Mm -hmm. And we provide that on our website. When you register, you can actually uh, download an app to start the process. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the uh, people that as old as seven in their 70s, mm -hmm. and they specialize in people that are playing pickleball in <laughs> hit America by storm. <laughs> and elderly are getting aggressive on the courts and knocking the ball combat around. Combat pickleball now. There's combat pickleball. <laughs> getting rid of all that anger. <laughs> yeah, yes, indeed. Decades of anger. <laughs> and so um, some of them are feeling it in their joints, understandably. Yeah. Yeah. And oh my God, if you just specialize in pickleball with FST, you're set. <laughs> yeah. Well, what used to be CrossFit is no pickleball for keeping our folks busy. And I think the other thing that I want to mention before we finish is that our goal is to, at the end of that five-day training, you are ready to go out immediately and apply it. Yes. The, the, because we have so much um, hands-on, the skills are very, very locked in before people leave. So it's not like you get one thing out of the course. You get an entire yep. giant um, repertoire of things to be able to leave with. And literally a reference library, you know, the, the book itself, all of those things that, you know, um, I, you can go back time and time and time again and just remind yourself of, you know, I, but I think if you've got a really good feel for the body, once you've got that, that, um, that basic skill set and then you can just develop that because it is individualized but what an amazing library to be able to fall back on if if there are bits that you want to expand upon well um, and and, and the, yeah, the other the other thing is is not only is it customized for the patient but our philosophy is to encourage the therapist to customize it for their own bodies right Yes, so that of they, they are getting their own flavor. So it does not look like a carbon copy of what we do, mm -hmm. but they find their own style. And I love that. I love the independence and the freedom of that. Stay mm -hmm. with the principles and the philosophy. Don't hurt anybody. Keep breathing. Create space if it's indicated. Keep that move on and just unwind them. So it's a, it's a beautiful... A beautiful thing to hand people to do, and I can't wait for you to join us to do it. 
Well, I, 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 I will be uh, hoping that lots and lots of people see this introduction and are stimulated enough to want to take their knowledge further forward because I just think this is a this is such an eye opener for a lot of Australians that you know particularly physiotherapists that you know there's been so much is it the right thing isn't it the right thing you know static stretching da 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 da, da. but you know when when you have an appreciation of the uh, multi dimensionality of the body that you can't just focus on one direction at a time. I mean, it, you know, it, they're doing it in training now where it's more functional training as opposed to just doing biceps curls uh, as an isolated exercise. So why not take it to the next level with, you know, with your practice in terms of, of expanding that idea to how you actually treat a body? One last question that I do have, though, is how much of the, the stuff that you do with people, is there an opportunity for them to do further practice at home? We have something called Life Stretch, which is cell stretching. And it is an online program that you can uh, get certified to learn how to teach it and for sure. homework. So mm -hmm. it's an adjunct that um, actually the, the students get an additional discount off of. Sure. Um, that is a fantastic way for self-care for the, the therapists themselves to give us homework for their patients mm -hmm. and to actually teach class if they like. So sure. we've, we've right. thought of that piece too, because that's the maintenance piece, right? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And, you know, I, I'm a great believer in, in putting um, the onus back on people as well, that Absolutely. there's not that dependency that you know, other other professions are, are run on on creating a dependency mindset. Um, mm -hmm. That's something I've never believed in. So you know, it's it's just lovely to be able to give people that um, that self efficacy as well. Well, it's their body; they should uh, own it and take responsibility. 100%. For it. Yeah, so I, we're, right, we're right with you on that. Mm, beautiful. Well, I can't wait for the course. Absolutely can't wait. So thank you. Fourteen so weeks. Fourteen much. weeks. We yeah, I know, I know. And I mean, let's face it, that'll be here in a flash. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with us and yeah. uh, bringing it to the thank people. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, what a great conversation. We uh, can't wait to see you and hug you again, my dear. Really looking forward to it. That's fantastic. Thanks so much.